Welcome to the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Inspire Wealth, bringing you interviews with top business professionals, empowering you to understand our current business climate and the successes and struggles other business professionals have overcome. Here's your host, Nick Boer. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Nick Bohr with Inspire Wealth, and I am really excited about our show today. Uh, we, everyone knows there's a lot of moving parts and changes in the small business or small to mid-sized business world, and it's always great to have one of the leaders on the show. So, uh, you know, I've got Eric Torrigan on with us today, who I would who I would say is not only a business advisor, but he is a leader in HR and strategic planning. So, you know, Eric, I want to welcome you to the show. Thanks so much for being here. Thanks, Nick. I was really excited to be part of this. I love your uh, podcast. I love the people that you talk to. You always are bringing interesting concepts to light for the small and medium sized business. Well, thanks. That's uh, that's definitely the objectives here. So, you know, Eric, I know you have a very, very strong, diverse background. Tell us, tell us a little bit about a your your background, and then you know how your how your your entrepreneurial journey has transcended. Yes, yeah, thanks. So, I started my you know I've had a thirty year HR transformational career is what I like to say. And throughout my career, I've always taken the assignments that nobody else wants. And then, like people say, I got the experiences that no one else was ever going to get. So I was the one who went out and did the division spinoff. You know, I did an IPO. I did unions and difficult contract negotiations and unions that were going on strike. And I went and did the shift off, and I've taken – shut down locations and closed plants and all of this has really taught me a lot about how hr is there to provide more than just you know people services we're there to to advocate and how we're there to to build grow and transform businesses i've also had the ability to work in a lot of different um, industries and ownership models. So I've been in manufacturing, I've been in telecommunications, I've been in entertainment, financial services, fintech, I've been in consumer product goods and, you know, manufacturing, more manufacturing than than I can even remember. I've been a part of a debtor in possession. So I was hired by a group of debtors that took over a business and it was my job to come in and, as from the HR perspective, be part of the restructuring team and close it down. I was hired by another group of, and it was actually Japanese, they were a company heading into bankruptcy, and they had a, a five-year plan to either to go into this bankruptcy and either exit or not. And you know, we were able to put this five-year plan into place, and we were able to transform the business, uh, took 70% of the SG&A costs out of the business, and restructured the entire global business. And you know, they exited and they're still running today as a viable business and it's just much smaller, much different look, but they're there and they're running. Wow. So then I was on the other side too where I had a private equity company approach me and they were at 2,000 employees and they wanted to get a business ready for transaction. So I joined, built their first ever professional HR system, built a talent acquisition system, You know, integrated training really changed the way they do talent management, talent development, scaled them from 2,000 to 8,000 global employees in 11 months. Wow. And then took them to an accelerated transaction. Yeah. Yeah, so then I really took a look at my – took a look at what was going on and look at what I was doing and the skills that I was bringing, and I decided, you know, I think, you know, Nick, you and I have had this conversation many times before, but – and I think we share this belief that this mid to small size business is really the backbone of our economy. And it's really, for me, what America's about and what the global economy is all about. I think we live in a very unique time where you can sort of identify a need, develop a solution, and then monetize and make revenue 
by providing those services. So I have decided to leave the corporate world. It was almost a year ago exactly today. I made the announcement, left the corporate world, went into my um, home office and built this fractional HR advisory service. And you know, I've been really humbled by the market's response to it. We're really seeing incredible growth and just an incredible response. So it's just been a very uh, rewarding year. Well, that's uh, that's great to hear because, you know, Eric, I, I've heard and, and I've discussed uh, several scenarios with small business so small business owners, uh, especially small business owners that have either launched businesses either right before COVID or, or during COVID or after COVID for one reason or another. And it's it's interesting to hear and it's so refreshing. I mean, you, you spent 30 years with big corporations as well as the mid-sized guys and helping them grow. And you realized at the, I'm not going to say the end of your career, but I'm going to say after 30 years of being in the big corporate space, you actually saw some of the shortcomings and some of the opportunities that needed to change in the business world from an HR and from an advisory standpoint. And you actually went out and launched a company to help solve the solution, to bring the solution. Yeah, you know, it's a very interesting journey that I went through because, and I can remember, and we all get onto this track, or a lot of us get onto this track, right? And I was just talking to another good friend of mine who does similar kind of stuff. I said, you know, you tend to be in these places where you're surrounding by, you're surrounded by other highly driven, high achieving people. And what tends to happen is you are driving so hard and and like you said, I was at Ford and Pepsi and NBC Universal, Comcast, you know, and I came to some of the most prominent auto suppliers and Tier 1 and Tier 2, and you have know, had the chance to really achieve at incredibly high levels in these organizations. And I remember driving hard, and the day I got to be a vice president and that feeling, and then the day I got my first appointment as CHRO and then global CHRO, and then my second CHRO role, and then this global CHRO of a almost 10,000 person company and, you know, these feelings. But then I started to realize is, where's the value? Like, how am I adding value? And right. that's what I really stopped and paused. And this is what made my decision, you know, easy for me. It's hard, right? Because you have the realities of life at the doorstep. There's a lot of people waiting in line at the end of every month, right? Yeah. So... There's realities of the world. But I decided I wanted to be someone who provided value. And I wanted to provide value for people that made a difference in this global economy. And that's when I developed my avatar of who my target customer is. Okay. I mean, that's... That's great, and that's and that really led you to that that small to mid sized businesses that are lacking in strategic planning when it comes to HR and, and and the other business the other business needs in that space. Exactly. So you see this small to mid sized business. We keep using that term. I'll put a little bit of framework around what it means for me. Is it's okay. really a hundred million dollars in revenue, right and below. Okay. It's probably less than a thousand employees. Yep. Right? It's probably founder owned and run, or maybe second generation owned and run, or maybe it's first generation of outside leadership for the operation. They are growing well, but they're getting to the stage in their growth curve where they need a lot of support around things like finance and HR and marketing and IT, and they're trying to figure out how to do this. And, and you know, my avatar, like I like to talk about, I actually have a, I stole a Lego man from my son's Legos, and that <laughs> my, represents my typical business owner, and he stands on my desk, because I always want to remind myself whenever I'm doing anything is, am I helping this person? Am I really enabling their journey and their growth? And that's when it came to me that, you know, that person didn't become an entrepreneur to be good at HR. Right. I did. So what I want to do and what, what our mission is, 
is we want to take all of these concerns off of that person's plate. So, so you go focus on growing your business. You go focus on being good at what you're good at. If you're a plastic extrusion person, you figured out how to die cut vinyl letters, you know, you've got some new twist to a restaurant, whatever that thing is, that's where you're adding value. You focus on that. I will help you take all these administrative burdens of and responsibilities off of your plate so you can go do even more of that. Yeah, that makes a that makes a ton of sense. I know we, you know, based on your your experience and even what you're experiencing now and my and my background, I mean, I see it all the time that, you know, entrepreneurs and business owners are trying to wear so many hats. And, and like you said, they did not get into business to be that HR person or to, or to do payroll or to do just those types of things. That's where you need someone like you that recognize the shortcomings of, of the need of, of the business advisor or that, that HR advisory practice as you portrayed it because it's so important as you're trying to grow and as you want to transition to either the second generation or a sale of the business as the owners get close to retirement. I know those are things that you see just as, just as well as I do is, is the, the, the struggles to attract high quality talent or the, the, the struggles to retain high quality talent. Yeah. And I see it all the time and it really comes down to, can you attract, develop, and retain a high-performance team? But I have these exact same conversations, and, you know, I, I have these conversations literally all day long, kind of like you do, Nick, and it, people will come up to me and say, you know, I'm really struggling with what do we do next in our business, and I'm trying to achieve X, and X can be a lot of different things. X might be, you know, next year I want to open a new location, or it might be I want to get into this new product line, or it might be I want to figure out how to get this, into my kids' hands and have it be a blessing in their life and not a curse, or I want to figure out how to sell this. I'm done. I want to go live in Harbor Springs. All of these things are, are, are problems that they're trying to handle. If we can remove some of the burden of those, of those problems, they can make better decisions, I believe. And, and it always comes down to your team. No, I, I agree, Eric. You, you, you know, you bring up a, a good point. And, you know, again, what, what, what I see and what I talk to existing clients or even, or even new potential clients is I, it's so important in today's world to a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners and executives, they want to get to the point of what I consider the work optional lifestyle. And it doesn't matter if they fully retire, part retire, run, you know, open a business, it doesn't matter. They, as you said, they, you know, a lot of them want to get it to that second generation and it'd be a blessing instead of a curse. And that owner is at the point where even if they're only 55 or even 60 and they didn't plan on retiring at this point, but they're just done. They're like, you know what? I'm done with the day to day. I've done what I needed to do and a very good job at growing the business. Now I need help. How do I transition it? How do I transition it to either a buyer or the next generation of my kids? All of those things that come up, you know, for businesses. And I know we were talking in this a little bit before we, you know, we started the show is you know, PEO. You know, what, what, what does a PEO mean? You know, a lot of people, they know what a PEO is or the concept of it, but they don't really know what it does and what are the pros and cons of PEOs. And are, are companies using PEOs the way that they were intended to be used? Yeah, that's a great point. And I think the way you said it is just is spot on. It's how are they intended or where do they serve? the best need. And listen, I'm a systems, transformational systems kind of thinking person, right? So I think of everything in terms of the arc or the system or the growth curve. What's this process ultimately look like? What's the algorithm, right? That's the, right. the new kind of moniker everywhere. How do we hack this algorithm? Well, I'm going to help you hack this algorithm real quickly right now. When you think about when you start a company, and you're just a handful of people. Well, payroll is very easy. You sit at the kitchen table and <laughs> how much do we need to buy milk this week? I mean, and 
I'm sure that got a chuckle out of a lot of these small business owners because we were all there where we sat up and it was maybe after everyone went to sleep and it was just us and a light bulb in the kitchen and we tried to figure out where we're going to make things meet. That's sort of your first phase, right, of running something. Right. Then you get to the point where you start to have some people around you helping and there's some people doing some things and now you start to have to pay payroll and you need to do workers' compensation and you need insurance and you want to be able to provide some group benefit and maybe, a, maybe you want a 401k or a SERP or there's some different things you want to start to offer. Right. Well, these PEOs really do a good job in that business phase because they're, they can set this up. Your payroll will run properly. Yep. Your taxes will get filed. Your insurances will get paid. What's not going to happen, though, is you're not going to get a strategic partner in this. You're going to get a partner, but you're not going to get help with the strategic side of the business. This is where you transform into what I call phase three, which is the growth phase. Okay. So if you want to just hold Pat, that's great. I don't think you went into business to hold Pat. You want to get into business to grow. Right. So if you want to grow, you're going to need to now sit down and do real strategic people planning. You need to do succession planning. You need to sit with your team and try to determine what's your merit going to look like next year. Who are you going to give what raises to and why? Where are you going to set performance bonuses? How are you going to tweak your policies and your programs? I, a lot of times people come up to me and say, hey, should we offer unlimited PTO? And my answer is maybe. And then they're like, well, what do you mean maybe? I said, well, it depends. you got to look at this much more to look at, and then we dig into it, and we can get to an answer, right? Yeah. But I always use the analogy, <clears throat> you can go to H&R Block and get your taxes done, and they're going to be done very well. It's going to be accurate. It's going to be timely. It's going to be cost-effective, and they're going to do a very good job of it. Right. You wouldn't hire them, though, to go build your five-year business plan. No. I, I see this a similar way. Okay. Don't no. let a payroll expert run your people strategy. Right. And, I, and Eric, I think that, is, that makes sense because I mean, you're, you're like, I, I, I'll, t I'll toss in one of an example uh, in my world. I mean, you're talking about PEOs and how, when you're trying to add things like group benefits and, and, and maybe, or, you know, a 401k and those types of things as you're growing, that makes sense to where a PEO can, can do a really good job with things like that as well as payroll and take that off your plate. The, the big thing is, and you mentioned, you said this exact word, exact word or phrase, you don't get the strategic partner as far as the planning side. And I say that because I see so many business owners that feel oh, well, I have a PEO, so what do I need someone like you to come in and tell me how to help me with retirement planning or how to help me with succession planning or, or additional benefits because I have the PEO, so doesn't that take care of everything? Exactly. And I've sat, into, I've sat in the meeting rooms, conference rooms of many small businesses and gone through their whole comp planning, and they've said these exact words to me. Well, you know, you don't need to stay for the rest of this. We're only going to go through all of the people. And I'm like, well, if you don't have an HR person who's going to sit with you as you go through all of your people, you don't have an HR person. Right. Right. And, you know, I, we need to be part of those discussions because I'm going to help you maximize strategically where you're going to apply those. If you just open your checkbook and start writing checks to people, you're not going to be effective at that. And this is when we get into these challenges, and I had a business owner say this exact thing to me. Why are all my people leaving for Amazon? Those jobs are nowhere near as good as ours. So right. Because people don't understand the value of working for you. You don't have a value proposition. Right. Well, how do we build one? Well, your PEO is not going to build it. No. No, and Eric, the other thing is too, I think the other big thing is, is I think especially when, you, when it comes to some of the ancillary or the extra benefits, things like, okay, the retirement plan, do you offer a match? You know, do you have to put in so much? Do you have to put a percentage in? Is there additional, maybe a deferred compensation plan or something like that, that a lot of times 
the owners don't do a thorough job explaining the value and how they can take advantage of that as an employee. And they also don't do that level of analysis where they say, should I write this check or should I write a different one? So, for example, if I have a relatively young workforce, you and I would say, take the match, right? Right. Because we're at a different – our, we're at a different point in our personal arc. But to them, to a lot of people, the real decision factor is, can I pay my bills at the end of the month? So, yes, I get it. That match is very nice. But that $250 at the end of the month in my paycheck is more impactful to me. That's where you need a strategic partner who can help you understand those things. So right. you're being extremely generous as a business owner. And this is what frustrates people. The like, guy did this, so I went out and I got these benefits for everybody. And I went and I built this pension plan for everybody and I put profit sharing in and I turned on a match and it's gonna cost me two hundred and fifty thousand dollars or I have you know this much percent now of EBITDA going towards this and and my people don't really seem to appreciate it. I said, Well, because first you didn't design it for something that they need. Right. Right. And then second, you didn't build a program to communicate it to them. And this is where we can help as Fractional HR leaders, we can come in there and, and help you understand that. And then we partner with the we partner with the right experts. We bring people like yourself in, or you know, be- benefits strategists. And look, I get it. The last thing anybody wants to do is sit down and have a five year benefits strategy discussion. Like, look, we don't even want to do these discussions; they're so boring. Right. But you have to do those things, and this is about being a good steward of your business. Well, and I think what I see all the time, not only is it about being a good steward of your business, but it's also for you as the owner or the executive team, it's also about you leveraging when do I retire? How am I going to transition out? Who is the business going to be given or transitioned to? What's the buyout structure? What does the succession or exit plan look like? Do we have an executive benefit plan to help fund some of these things and retain the executives that may or may not be taking over? All of those things exactly. are so crucial. And, you know, again, as you said, the business owners did not get into the business to know all the ins and outs of these types of things or to run payroll or to do benefits. And I couldn't agree more with that. They got into the business or to be an entrepreneur to run and grow their business, which is what they're good at. They need to have the experts in place like you and me and other individuals, as you said, like group benefits strategists. I I, I don't like I'll be the first to say I am not a group benefits person. I am an executive benefits. I am a retirement benefits. I am a financial literacy or retirement planning guru that's willing to come in and, and, and educate your employees, not only on some of the benefits that they're offering, but also on, hey, how does this impact me from a tax perspective, or should I be maximizing the, 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 the IRA or the 401k contributions? Most business owners don't have a clue when it comes to how little their employees may or may not even know about not only their benefit plan, but their retirement benefits and how they're saving now could impact them when they get to retirement and how taxes impact them. And, you know, I had a business, it was around 3,500 employees, a little bit bigger than my target. Um, I came in, and we just did some benefit, basic benefit design work for them, and eligibility audit, a couple couple items. I took $350,000 out of their run rate and funded their next two years benefits increases. But how do you get, like... There it is right there. And you want to see what the real value is? That is real dollars out of your run rate. Those are real dollars you are not spending anymore. Like, and that's the stuff that you don't, I don't expect you to know that. So yeah. We've spent 30 years getting good at this stuff. It doesn't deserve to only be the biggest companies in the world that get this. You know, I did it when I was at a Fortune 100 company 
we were able to do enough benefits design work that we paid for the next year. And I was like, well, why can't we do that for small companies? Well, you can. You just got to be a little bit more creative in it. And that's where you get the right experts in. You get the people that have the right passion. And I always say, let's look for people that have the heart of a teacher. Let's look for people who want to explain things to you, help you understand. And then it's not about me. It's not about Nick. It's not about how smart we are or what we might know. It's about how do you, Mr. and Mrs. Small Business Owner, meet your goal? How do you accelerate your journey with our help as the guide? Absolutely. And that's, that's what led me to develop the HR operating system. So let's, let's, let's talk about that, Eric, because I know obviously you and I have talked about that. I think that's such a, I think that's your, that's one of your big differentiators is your HR operating system. Help me in our audience understand what does that mean and how do you help business owners implement that to help grow and make their business more efficient? So this is the outgrowth again of all of this time helping people who aren't and shouldn't be experts in HR. And I realized, you know, it's a lot like a computer. And, you know, my wife likes Windows and I like Macs. But, so we have Macs <laughs> everywhere and now we've gotten phones and all these different things. And she's got, it's actually one of my older computers now sitting on a desk that she uses. Um, and I'm pointing at it right here behind me like everyone can see. <laughs> and I asked her, I said, do you want me to put Windows on there? And she's like, well, I would prefer that. And I said, why? And it created a really interesting set of conversations. And we really got to the fact that I don't care what the operating system is, right? I don't care what that, I don't care what conversations are happening behind the scenes on the computer. What I care about is a simple set of concepts and tools that help me get my work done. Right. And there was the birth of the HR operating system. Because I realized we could put together a simple set of concepts and tools around HR that help the companies get better at three key things. And these are the three things that, again, this is my 30 years of experience. You know, maybe my survey N is a little bit small, but this is what CEOs tell me they want from HR. Attract, develop, and retain high-performance teams. Those are the three things I need you to do. Compliance, payroll, I get it. That's going to get done. I don't, I don't worry about that at night. What I worry about is, are we getting the best people to work for this company? Are we winning the hiring game? Are we developing and growing our people so they feel value, they grow, they get better? And then are we retaining them? Do we have highly engaged, empowered people who want to stay and make a difference here? And that's what the HR operating system does. It's a very simple set of tools that you can plug in and use and run your business. And whether you are three, I have a, uh, my smallest client right now is a founder who's just starting. He's in pre-seed phase and he's got three employees um, up to one with 5,000 employees almost. So, there's a wide range there. I would say small to mid-sized business. Um, be happy to take a look at this with you and see how we could plug it in to help you do those things. I think that's, uh, Eric, I think that's very, very, you know, important to what you just talked about with your HR operating system. I, I, I think the key is exactly what those, those three words because I've heard it over and over again with different people I've had on the show, with, with people I've talked to that are clients or potential clients. Some of the biggest struggles that people have had in the last three to five years are attracting, developing, and retaining top talent. And the fact that you built your HR operating system to help accomplish those things, I mean, that's brilliant. I, I, I couldn't have, I couldn't have, there's nothing more I could say other than that's brilliant because that's what is needed in that small to mid-sized market. Well, and I, the other thing that I found what this does is it also drives these data-driven conversations. So let's stop guessing and let's start letting the data show us. So instead of guessing at what we need to do, let's look at this in a, in a 
systematic way. So we have this HR blueprint tool that you can use, and it's actually people can access it online for free. And you go in there, and you, it takes you about 10, 15 minutes to go through and answer all the questions. And at the end, you get a score. And then based on that score, we could tell you things that you can do to start to improve your HR system. Whether you use our operating system or our fractional services or your own local teams, doesn't matter. What matters is that you look at, you look at this relationship, right? So you have a relationship with your employees. Yep. One of the things that COVID showed us is people's expectation of the relationship with their employer has changed. So when I started work in the late 80s, early 90s, it was a different, there was a different contract between employee and employer. Today, people have <clears throat> different expectations, and you have to understand what that relationship looks like. This is a systematic set of tools to look at the things that you do and what is, and what is the outcome of that. Like there's no F of X for culture. There's no formula that can define your culture. Your culture is the output of the things that you do every day. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't, uh, I couldn't agree more. Well, you know, Eric, I, I just want to say thanks for, you know, for coming on the show. And th this is, I mean, this has been very, very good information. I even eye opening for me, and I think you know, for some of our listeners, I think this is such an important topic for these struggles that, that these small to mid-sized businesses are experiencing day in and day out. And they need to know that there are people and companies like you that can come in and help solve some of these problems from an HR standpoint, as well as help them kind of take the, take the weight off their back so that they can run their business like they intended to. Exactly. And <clears throat> don't let the price scare you because it's probably not – what you're thinking. So just, you know, reach out. There's a lot of free tools. There's a lot of different ways we can help you. And like you said, Nick, like you with your clients and with your podcast, and I had a chance to listen to a lot of them and to your radio shows, the passion comes through. And that's what I try to bring every day is a passion for this. And if I can rub some of that off on somebody, that's all I'm looking to do. Yep. And, you know, I can tell based on our conversations we've had already and our conversation today, you're, you're, you're a lot like me. You're doing this for the right reasons. You're doing this because you want to help and you know you can add value. And, and you've said that word a few times, too, that sometimes the business owners don't know how to portray or explain their value to the employees, well, that's very important. That's why you and I know we add value. That's why we know some of the impact that we can help in the business community and why we do what we do. Exactly. Exactly. And that's, that's the phase that we're in of the world right now is we're in the value phase. Yep. And that's the market's going to select companies and products that add value. Yep. Yeah, no, I, I agree. So, you know, again, Eric, I, I want to just, again, say thanks for coming on the show and, you know, really appreciate it. And if, uh, if any of our listeners want to get in touch with you, t tell us what's the easiest or the best way to get in contact with you. So on LinkedIn, Eric Terigian, you can find me on LinkedIn. You can find us on the web. It's chrosolutions-us.com. Um, or you can find me on Twitter at Eric Terigian. Okay. No, that's uh, that's great. I uh, again, I want to say thanks, and I want to thank our listeners. Thank you. Yeah, for another great episode of the Inspired Business Leaders podcast. And again, as always, I'm your host Nick Bohr uh, with Inspire Wealth. And I want to say again, thanks. And until next time, everyone, have a great day. Thank you for listening to the Inspired Business Leaders Podcast, brought to you by Inspire Wealth. To learn more about the topics mentioned on today's show, or to listen to past episodes, visit www.inspiredbusinessleaderspodcast.com. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll catch you in the next episode.